Hello and welcome to Treasury Notes, a financial education program from the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. I'm your host, Gina Joins. State Treasurer Riley Moore has made it a priority to return unclaimed property to rightful owners quickly and efficiently. Through a new outreach effort and some initiatives, the West Virginia Unclaimed Property Division has returned a record amount of unclaimed property during the 2023 fiscal year. Later in the show, the Deputy Treasurer of Unclaimed Property will join me to talk about the efforts that led to this record-breaking year. But first, we are going to learn a little bit more about the, how the Unclaimed Property Division handles tangible property, like the contents of safe deposit boxes that are turned over to the state. Joining me now to talk about this is Diane Billings and Dan Reed, who are our safekeeping specialist with the Treasurer's Unclaimed Property Division. Diane and Dan, thank you both for being here today. It's always fun to talk with you about this topic. And while most of the um, property turned over to the Unclaimed Property Division in the State Treasurer's Office is monetary, we do receive some tangible property, primarily from dormant bank uh, safe deposit boxes. Diane, can you just start us off by explaining why and how this property does end up in the Treasurer's Office? Yes, under the Unclaimed Property Act, businesses are required to report yearly uh, amounts that have not been able to get to their owners. And the only business that uniquely does this is banks as far as tangible because we'd have that safe deposit account. So they have to be dormant for five years with the bank trying to reach the owner of the account. And then after that time, they do report them and exchange the items to us. All right, so mostly, like you said, this is items from safe deposit boxes. Um, Dan, let's talk about uh, how much of this type of unclaimed property the treasurer's office usually receives each year. I'm sure there are um, many banks all over the state that are reporting this property? There are. Uh, there were a total of just under 300 total safe deposit boxes reported uh, to us last year. Uh, of those, there could be anywhere between one and 30 items per safe deposit box. Uh, so there's quite a bit of property that comes through. Yeah, and it's, I mean, these safe deposit boxes aren't huge, so I'm sure the, the variety of items can vary. They do vary. It's, it's what, uh, you know, usually what the, the box owner deemed, you know, their most valuable properties, and uh, uh, they can range anywhere from coins to antique glasses to mama's engagement ring uh, to legal documents. Any other types of unclaimed property that you're used to seeing through these safe deposit boxes? Uh, we always see knives, knives and pocket watches always. Yeah, and uh, some baseball cards, maybe $2 uh, bills, <laughs> jewelry. Ton, tons of, we have lots of bar notes. Oh, wow. The $1 bar notes, uh, which will be in our uh, um, uh, state fair auction as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Diane, um, your title, both you and Diane are safekeeping, you and Dan are safekeeping specialists. So let's talk about uh, what that role is and exactly what your day-to-day -day duties are. Okay. We do fall under the receipts um, division in that we receive money and tangibles from businesses. Uh, so we help banks prepare their uh, yearly reports and when they are submitted we go through them and then when the, the tangibles arrive we we inventory them and document them putting them into the system and comparing them to what the bank said and when the if they are not claimed uh, when time to auction them we are we are uh, doing that as well getting them ready to to be auctioned and you said earlier banks have to do their due diligence so they are yes. Um, they do have to, by law, try to find rightful yes. owners, but if that fails, then that's when you become involved that's and uh, the yes. items come to you. Um, okay, so Dan, I want to talk about these items again, uh, just the different types of items. Sometimes people will keep legal documents, special papers, important things, um, uh, maybe stocks or certificate papers in their safe deposit boxes, what happens to those types of items after you receive them? Because that's not necessarily something like jewelry that you could auction off. We still keep all the legal documents, uh, the, the wills, the power of attorneys, um, stock certificates, all those items are, are kept. We have a special place that we keep the documents. The documents are kept forever until they're claimed. 
All right. And a lot of those items are sentimental, I'm sure, to some people. So they're very personal items. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, we, we do feel a, a privilege that we're kind of the, the last uh, ones to try to reunite these items and um, we, we of course document them and we know they're going to be advertised so hopefully the account owner or the heirs come forward um, and going through it it's, it's a little bit you know tugs at your heart sometimes to see the things that are kept and know that they're passed down and we just hope we get it back to them. So some truly unique things can you um, recall some of the unique things you've seen come through the office over the years? So. Uh, we had some of the antique, the things from the 20s and 30s, maybe uh, the, the metal compacts or little purses that were carried way back then, and uh, the, the vintage jewelry that is different than it is now. Uh, and then in later years, we've seen the, the golden fingernails and the golden grills. So <laughs> a little bit of everything. You just yeah. don't know. Yeah. Right. Do you have so. any favorites, Dan? Well, we had a uh, presentation flare gun. Oh. And it was from the Big Red One, the first infantry from World War II. And it was set in there for several years uh, before it was actually reunited with the gentleman's heir. And uh, he was very excited. We did a presentation in Cabell County to reunite that gun with his heir. And I know, uh, I think it was last year that you all were able to reunite um, uh, some uh, important military medals with family members. I think we, we talked about that in our last show, but that's got to be really special. It is. I mean, that is because that's a, um, it's such an honor and for us to be able to be involved in getting that back to the to the person. A couple of them were for the actual people, but their families. I mean, that's a keepsake that... Uh, you know, there is no price for. <laughs> yeah, absolutely priceless. And it's got to be rewarding to do oh, that kind of absolutely. job. We yes. got to meet the, the relatives, uh, you know, of those medal recipients as well at the presentation ceremony. Oh, that's that's fantastic. All right, so we, we, we've talked a little bit about auctions and, and things like that, but we haven't really explained how this process goes along once these items, um, you know, the bank does their due diligence. They could not find a rightful owner. It comes to the treasurer's unclaimed property to division to the two of you to start cataloging. Um, so there is a, a process to sort through the, these items, catalog them, and then uh, try to find the rightful owner at least one more time, is that right? That is correct, yes. Uh, they are advertised, it goes on our website as soon as the reports are in and we verify that everything is correct. So we are just helping, hoping that you know they see it or a family member sees it. It can be claimed um, you know, just as easily as any other, the monetary claims. And um, that, that's one of our, the parts that's rewarding for us in that many times we have catalog them and put them away and then we get to pull them back in and send them out and say, you know, yes, this was, was, uh, was given back. Right, but the truth of the matter is you're, that's not always going to be the case. That's correct. Sometimes these items are sitting in the, the vault for years and years. So what's the next steps after that, after the items have been sitting in the vault After for a we've while? exhausted all that we can, you know, through advertisement or direct mail. We had a direct mail or, you know, that went out to uh, safe deposit box recipients. Uh, we've been very lucky and able to return a lot to those uh, uh, owners. But after that, then it, it goes to auction. Right. And um, we have a new auction company, GovDeals.com. And um, they have a very wide national presence. Uh, their presence in West Virginia uh, in a 150 mile radius of Charleston is over 45,000 active uh, buyers. So they have a very wide presence in West Virginia. Um, we, we catalog these items. Uh, we send them to the govdeals.com and they do the appraisals and try to get the most money that they can you know, for these items. And people can go to wvunclaimedproperty.gov to find out more about these auctions. That's correct. There's a link on that website, our website, that will lead them right to uh, our auctions. Um, this is pretty interesting, the way people are able to go and then search and periodically um, buy these items. But um, the sad part is it hasn't been reunited with the owner, yes. and you just can't keep everything, right? So, so that's the purpose of these auctions. What happens, though, after that item is sold? 
um, the owner, if, if someone, if an heir or an owner would ever come forward, what's the process then once the item's not, no longer in? Those monies are kept in the unclaimed property account in the event that an heir, the owner or an heir ever make a claim for those properties. So the, the money is kept in perpetuity and, it is. and there's always that option to get those proceeds. Yeah. All right, so the neat thing is that you're able to um, select different items that are featured on these online auctions and then there are some live auctions as well. Talk a little bit about that process. So um, the things that are featured items are usually uh, what is of interest to people, whether it be a very special coin or very unique unique item, uh, sometimes of course the ones that are worth it a lot we want to feature, but also something that's very rare. So that, that's what they pull out to feature. Uh, all the items are sold, but of course we, we advertise that. And as far as the live auctions, uh, same, same deal. We have one upcoming at the fair. We have four, actually, uh, and we're very excited about that. And it has coins and cards and pocket knives, just a little bit of everything. And those live auctions are an exciting time at the State Fair. Talk a little bit about that, the fact that um, we have um, some information on the screen right there, all the dates for the live auction, the August 11th, 12th, 18th, 19th. They start at 5 p.m. They're in the West Virginia building. It's a fun time, isn't it, Dan? It's a great time. Uh, there's no, you don't have to register you know, to bid on items. You, you can stand there. You can bid as, as we... Uh, you know, go through each lot. The lots are displayed uh, the entire day before the auction, um, and it, it's a great time. People have a great time bidding on these items. And we see some of the items that will be featured in this year's live auctions at the State Fair again um, in August. Um, Diane, this is this is a lot of fun for for both of you because uh, you spend all year curating some of these items, I'm sure. Yes, it is fun. And it is fun to, to pick out. And uh, if we have items that go with the theme of the night, maybe the bull riding night, we have actually some, uh, some horse cufflinks and so forth. We try to coordinate with the event, but it is a lot of fun. The people stopping by the booths to view the items, maybe get excited about something, bringing someone else, say, yeah. hey, I'm going to try to bid on this. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. And then we also have them check for unclaimed property while they're there. We have a computer, you know, set up to see if they have anything. That's a great point. Again, you know, we, we said earlier, Dan, people can, if, they, if these items are no longer in possession at the state treasurer's office, um, you always still have right to claim what is rightfully yours. And most of unclaimed property is not. Is, it's not tangible items. Most of it is is monetary, um, and it was just lost or forgotten or uh, maybe misplaced. There's all different reasons why money comes into the state's unclaimed property division, but people uh, have an option to go and look online and see if something is due to them. They should look and look often on our website because there's different reporting seasons. You know, in, in May and November, uh, look for their heirs. Uh, I, I still find money for heirs. It's amazing. All right. Mm -hmm. Anything else the two of you would like to add before we close out the segment? Just what he said, to not forget to look. Uh, and Treasure Moore has implemented ways this year in the Unclaimed Property Division to make it easier to claim, easier to get the word out there, share it with your friends when you find through texts or emails. So we're just excited and we want to return money and items to the people it belongs to. You never know. Go yeah. online and check it out. Check out the online auctions as well. And if you're able to, go to Greenbrier County. Stop by at the State Fair. I'm sure you'd love to see everyone out there. Dan and Diane, thank you so much thank you. for thank being you, here Gina. today. We appreciate the conversation. And we're going to take a short break right now. But when we return, we'll learn more about the Treasurer's Unclaimed Property Division and the record-breaking amount returned during the 2023 fiscal year. Stay with us. We will be right back. The West Virginia State Treasurer's Vault is holding millions in unclaimed property. From uncast checks to forgotten utility deposits, we want to return your money to you. Find out if you have unclaimed property. Search your name at wvtreasury.com. Hi everyone, welcome back to Treasury Notes. I'm your host, Gina Joins. 
During the 2023 fiscal year, which ended on June 30, the West Virginia Unclaimed Property Division returned a record-breaking amount of unclaimed property to rightful owners. The increased number of returns is a result of new outreach efforts to more quickly and efficiently return unclaimed property. Joining me now to talk more about this accomplishment is the Deputy Treasurer of Unclaimed Property, Laura Goins. Laura, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Gina. All right, we talked earlier with Dan and Diane, your safekeeping specialist in the Unclaimed Property Division. They talked all about the tangible items that come from safe deposit boxes, and how that process works and what happens to those items. But a lot of exciting things have been happening in the State Treasurer's Unclaimed Property Division uh, this year. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about that, get an overview, too, of unclaimed property and what unclaimed property is, how this works, and why it's in the Treasurer's Office. Oh, those are great questions. So, yes, we have had a lot of wonderful things happening in our Unclaimed Property Division. First of all, unclaimed property are those items or assets that people may have forgotten about or have been lost. Things like payroll checks that haven't been cashed or a gift certificate or a safe deposit box or life insurance. It's, it's all kinds of, of assets that are money and they belong to the people of West Virginia. And what happens is, is those um, holders, or often those are banks or utilities, they're responsible for turning that money in, and we call that a report, and they provide the money to us at certain times of year. Um, I, Dan may have mentioned in May and in November. And so every year we get new money that we want to immediately get back out as quickly as we can to the owners of those properties. And so some of the things that we have done to try to increase that are we have a, a wonderful multimedia marketing campaign and um, we are also, everything gets put on our website so that you can look it up by your name and address or just your name. And then the, the, the really fun part is how do we get that information to other people? And so one of the things we just started is a program where we can um, share that information if you're on a mobile device by text, just like you would text or your friend anything else and say, hey, I found you unclaimed property, here's the link. And you can share that by text or if you are on your uh, regular laptop, then you can send it by email as well. And this has been extremely successful. Um, we were able to return over uh, $26.8 million worth of unclaimed property to their owners this wow. year. And we are delighted and we, we just can't wait to, to help reunite more people with their money. And as I mentioned before, that is a record. This, that is a record, um, an all-time high for um, annual returns for unclaimed property. It is. It is a. It is. It is definitely a fabulous record for us. Giving back to the people um, what is rightfully theirs. That's what the exactly. Unclaimed Property Program is all about. And you mentioned the website. And we saw some websites come up on the screen just a few minutes ago. Of course, people can go directly to wvunclaimedproperty.gov to. Yeah put in their name, do that mm -hmm. search. You mentioned they can go on there and search for friends and family as well and then share it via text message or email. Yes. There's, there's different options to do that. That's a really great way for people to become aware of unclaimed property and know it's legitimate. Yes. Um, if they have questions, they can also go to the treasurer's main website. There's mm -hmm. more information about unclaimed property and a link to the unclaimed property site there. That, that website is wvtreasury.com. And, you know, Aside from looking for your name in mm -hmm. unclaimed property, last year the, the state legislature created and the treasurer's office implemented the West Virginia Cash Now program, which is an automatic program where checks are going to just be dropped right in the mail. Talk about this because this is pretty oh, exciting. This is, this is definitely one of the most exciting programs we have right now. Um, so the West Virginia Cash Now program, it's a data match program. What we do is we... We look and see if we can identify property and figure out who it belongs to. And if we can locate their address, then we're sending them their check. And the way we do that is through first a mailing of a letter. So um, if 
If you receive that letter, then all you have to do is double check that your name and address are correct. And then if, that, if your name and address are correct, simply wait and we will mail a check to you um, this year. It'll be in October. So start looking for your mailbox now. So right now in the summer, um, early fall, people are going to be getting these letters to find mm -hmm. out if they are going to be a part of the West Virginia Cash Now program and be mailed a check. This is a once a year program that started last year, so you're only doing it one time a year. So only right. once a year can you get that special check in the mail. Yeah. And as you said, you have to double check and make sure that your information is correct when you get that first letter. If, if it's correct, you don't have to do anything but cash the check when you receive it. That's it's correct. not correct, what do they have to do? If it's not correct, we recommend that you call our 1-800 number or go to our email address of West Virginia Cash Now at wvsto.gov and make sure that we are able to correct that so that you get your check in the mail. All right. And um, as I said, this is only happening once a year, um, and it only applies to single owner properties. Um, we want to make that distinction. So a business is not going to get a check. Um, some of the more complicated unclaimed properties that are um, in your system are not going to be automatically matched. Talk about why it's that uh, single owner property. The single owner properties are the properties that we're able to obtain all of the data ourselves in certain circumstances. But when it comes to properties such as businesses, there's additional information that we need to collect to verify that the person that is receiving the money is the correct person to receive the money. So for example, for a business, will need to have additional information to confirm Secretary of State, the tax ID, and whether or not the person who is filing the claim is, is rightfully entitled to that. Similarly, um, estates, when there are estates, when someone has passed on, um, we have to be very careful to get additional information to ensure that the appropriate person or persons, if someone um, has, has multiple relatives, all get the right amount of, of that property. So those types of properties need additional care and cannot be automatically distributed. So what we want to do is encourage everyone, please check our website at any time and see if you have unclaimed property and it's very easy to file a claim. Um, you just do that online, you, you get on the website and you click file a claim and follow the directions. Follow the directions. One of those directions is you may receive an email, so you have to check for that email, mm -hmm. check your junk folder. Um, if you don't receive that email, be sure to, to contact the office immediately because we, the treasurer's office wants to give your money back and it's yes. just a, a quick process if you follow the steps. Now, um, if you're lucky enough to receive a West Virginia Cash Now check, as we said, not everybody's going to, but if you're mm -hmm. one of the ones who are lucky enough to receive it, um, you may be skeptical. Okay, a, a check coming in the mail, but there are some things you can check for to make sure it's legitimate. Definitely. Um, first of all, it would have um, our treasurer's signature on the check. <laughs> um, it will come in a special envelope with both our state seal and our West Virginia Cash Now logo. It will have a letter from Treasurer Moore along with a list of the property information. And most importantly, your check will be enclosed. So please don't throw away the envelope. Make sure you cash that check and cash it quickly. <laughs> All right. I, um, I mean, this is an exciting program, as we said. A lot of people um, are going to be able to take advantage of this West Virginia Cash Now program, especially in its second year. And we want to raise awareness for this program. But as we said, um, if you're not one of the ones receiving a check, and those checks are going to be mailed out in October right now, um, July mm -hmm. through uh, September, mm -hmm. they should receive a, a notification stating whether or not they will receive a check. That is correct. And then checks will be mailed out in October. If you didn't receive a check or you didn't receive a notification letter, 
um, you encourage people to still look for their name online, um, look for their friends and relatives online mm -hmm. because they're those new share features where it's easy to share the information with friends and family. So talk a little yeah. bit more about that. Yes, please, please, please check our website and find property for you and your friends and and fill out the claim form online the more information you provide makes it easier for us to more quickly get that money back to you um, if you have a friend and you see their name please send it to them because our goal is to give everyone their money back and we want to make sure that we try to make it as easy as possible to do that. And um, we, we do, though, have to make sure that we are not um, sending it to the wrong person. So sometimes you're going to be asked additional questions. And as Gina mentioned, it's very important to check your junk email box. And they might be asking for something simple, like a, a driver's license, a, a photocopy, or a photocopy of a death certificate, or, or other things that will help us ensure that we are getting the money back to the right person. And those, inf those items can be uploaded from your mobile phone. So just please be sure to check your email, um, follow up with any additional questions, and we would look forward to returning your money to you. Yeah, and it's, it's um, a process where you do have to sometimes be patient, yes. but definitely worth the wait. Um, the treasurer's office does this service for free, mm -hmm. so that's important to note. I think that it's no cost to the individual to file a claim or to receive their money. Um, you'll never be asked by the state treasurer's office for that, but you will be asked for information once you start a claim, and so you should be yes. expecting that. Yes, you will have to provide information so that we can ensure that we're returning the money to the rightful owner. But it's important to note that you um, go to our, the website, initiate the claim first, and after that is when you'll be asked for that information. Uh, we talked a little earlier, Laura, and we have about a minute and a half left, but we talked earlier about the record-breaking year for unclaimed property. Let's just recap a little bit more about why this was such a successful year for the unclaimed property division. Well, this was a fabulous year for the Unclaimed Property Division because we've had so many wonderful changes and programs that have been implemented. We had our West Virginia Cash Now program where we um, sent out over $4.2 million worth of checks. Um, we've had a fabulous um, marketing effort that has been, we've had digital marketing efforts, we've had national media campaigns, we've been on Good Morning America, and we've had just, just so many things have come together in addition to the very, very, very hard work of the unclaimed property staff. They have just gone above and beyond to, to serve um, the, the citizens of West Virginia. And just, I, I can't express enough how hard they work to, to make these things happen and get the money back to, to people of West Virginia. And so I, I'm just delighted to see that our projects are working and uh, look forward to returning even more money. That's a great note to end on. Laura, thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate your time. That's all the time we have. Thank you for joining us. You can learn more about the State Treasurer's Office by visiting wvtreasury.com. Also, you can find us on social media. Just follow WV Treasury on your favorite social media platform. Keeping you informed on the Library Television Network, I'm Gina Joins with the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office.